Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Dylan and in this one we're going to be taking a look at this spatial reasoning 11 plus question type that we call puzzle pieces. Now the reason we call it puzzle pieces is because, well, it acts like a puzzle. On the left hand side, as you can see here, you are given, with my lovely circling, you are given a full shape. Now this shape is the finished article. It's the final puzzle once everything's been put together. And luckily for us, these puzzles are only two pieces. But it does get tricky because as you can see here, you are given a part of the initial shape. So let me get rid of these lines. This here is part of the original. It's our job to figure out what's missing. That's the other puzzle piece. And we're given five options. So which of these five options fits perfectly here to make the initial finished article. Well, there's lots we have to think about here and there's quite a few techniques we can go through to get to the right answer. But firstly, I want you to have a go. Pause this video if you need to and pick which one of these you think fits in. And the first thing you might notice is that none of them fit if you just move it and put it there. There has to be some rotation as well. Now, a couple of ways to go about this. One way is you can take the initial puzzle piece and start to draw in what it should look like when it is completed, not forgetting this little part here that has been cut off. Now this helps some people because then they can think, okay, well, whatever I've drawn, that's what I'm looking for. Two triangles, one larger one and a smaller one, both pointing down like this, but remember it can be rotated. As soon as we know it's two triangles that we're looking for, we can get rid of A, we can get rid of B, we can get rid of C, and we can actually get rid of E as well because this is not a triangle here. This is too much. Therefore, D is the only one that works and we can confirm it by rotating at 90 degrees clockwise. It would fit perfectly over there. Now, remember I said there are a few ways to go about this. The first one is to draw in what would have been there before it had been cut off. The other part is to look at the original shape here and do the cutting. So we can cut down here and up there. And some people prefer this method because there's fewer lines that you have to draw. You can now trace it around here and look, we can still see the big triangle and the small triangle. So whichever way you prefer, drawing and jotting things down are a really good way of visualizing spatial questions like this. So let's try another one. I want you to pause the video, have a go yourself. What do we need to add to this shape here to make this finished shape over on the left hand side. So pause the video if you need to. I'm gonna talk you through exactly what to do now. And remember our technique. I'm actually going to start with the second one this time where I'm going to cut what looks like halfway on both of these lines here. I'm gonna do a rough cut there. You, know, you might think, oh, that's not a great cut. Okay, I might wanna rub that out. I'm gonna try it again. Try and make it as realistic as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just there to help you. So I'm looking for this shape here. It's about half. So essentially what I've worked out by doing this is I want this exact shape again. But as you'll see on the right hand side, although we can get rid of A because that's a different shape and C because that's a different shape, we can see that B, D and E, although rotated, are the exact same shape with the same angles and the same length sides. So how can we possibly get to the bottom of which one fits perfectly? Well, we're going to have to look at the shading now and the shading matters and we have to put into account the rotation. So if we have the lines like this going that way and if we were to rotate this shape and it looks like we're rotating at 90 degrees anti-clockwise, where would these lines end up? Well, look, firstly, it can't be D because D, we're going straight from the parallel lines here with perpendicular lines going across making a right angle, which would mean we'd need lines doing this. And that simply is not what we're looking for. So let's get rid of that. It can't be D. Same for E. These lines are just going in the wrong direction. They'd actually end up going up like this if we were to rotate it around to make it fit. So no, it can't be E either. B is actually the right answer, not just because of the shape, but also because of the shading inside as well. Now, before I carry on, I just want to let you know that if your child loves watching these videos and gets so much out of them, well, we've got hundreds more on our website. You can scan that QR code right now if you're watching this on your television or go down into the description to this video where you'll see a link to try our resources for free. We have hundreds of lessons. We have pre-recorded full lessons just like this with Hayden and I going through every single question type and we have multiple lessons on each one. We have homework sheets that we've designed where you can practice and video walkthroughs of each question on the homework so you know exactly where your child went right or wrong. There's so much there for them. 
You can try a few lessons for absolutely nothing just by signing up to the website. So go and have a look right now. And we also do online tuition, group sessions twice a week with a qualified primary school teacher. And it's free to try that as well. So if your child loves what we're doing here, why not come and give it a go for free? With that all said, let's move on to another question. So let's pause this video and let's think, okay, this one looks slightly different. This one looks a bit odd to me because instead of just one piece, it looks like we've got two. Well, yeah, sure, we can count it as two, but all we need to understand is that we just need to fill the gap to make this initial shape here. So firstly, I want you to pause this video. I want you to have a go yourself, which one, A, B, C, D, or E, would fit perfectly in there. And now I'm gonna show you how we go about this systematically. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use both techniques just to show you. So the first technique is you'd be drawing in lines to finish and complete the shape, just like that. And be careful also to go over these lines here because they're important. So we're looking for almost like a pentagon, a squished up pentagon like that pointing up. Or we could have gone over here and we could have drawn in the cut lines ourselves and seen what was left, something like that. And we can see they're very similar shapes, okay? Now this is where we have to be so precise because again, we can get rid of A because we know one side has to be flat, so that would be wrong. And we can also get rid of E because neither side has a point, so that's wrong. But the remaining shapes all are roughly the same. And this is where we need to really focus on the angles inside of the shape and the length of the lines of the shape. So first thing I want to get rid of is D. Now, can you see why I want to get rid of D? Hopefully it's pretty obvious. And if I just rub out these rough lines I've drawn in thick blue pen, maybe it'll become more obvious why I've done that. Because this point on D is just simply too pointy. It would have to go up too far and it would look out of place and it wouldn't get that flush line going across that we need in that example there. So D is too pointy. The angle of this point is too small, which makes it really pointy. So it does not work. Whereas C and B, those angles look pretty good to me. So there has to be something else that's separating C and D. And now instead of it being the angle, it is the length. Look at this length of this gap here. This matches perfectly with B. C is far too wide. So C is too chunky, get rid of it. And this really highlights the importance of, sure you wanna cut your shape up on the left-hand side, you wanna see the rough shape that you're looking for, but when the shapes look the same and the only difference is angles being slightly different or lengths of lines being slightly different, we have to be really precise. It has to fit exactly into the gap we see here. So the length of lines, the angles between lines in a shape become super, super important. Hopefully you can see that in that example right there. So let's try another one then. This time, I tried to make it even more complicated. Again, you're thinking here, what? Three? Yeah, look, just use our technique, pause the video, have a go, draw it down on paper if you need to, and let's see if we can find exactly what we're missing on the right-hand side. So let's dive in and hopefully you've had a go yourself. Now, I'm going to use the cut technique because I personally find it easier to draw the cut lines than to try and fill in the gap here. So it looks to me as if we've got a cut going down here to make this triangle. It looks also as if we've got a cut across here and across here to take out that middle chunk. And then we've got a similar cut at the top that's symmetrical to the one at the bottom. And I'm actually gonna fill out now what I'm looking for. So this curved edge here with a curved edge there and then fill that out. So you can see by using my technique, I can tell I'm after two shapes actually. They're symmetrical and they go in that gap perfectly that we see here to make our original shape. So I'm going to get rid of anything that doesn't have two shapes straight away. And to me, that's obviously A, so get rid of that one. But the rest do, so I'm going to have to be more picky. Now, I'm looking for points, aren't I? You can see this here, there is a point, almost like three sides with a curve. So I'm looking for three-sided shape. So again, I'm gonna get rid of B, because they're four-sided shapes. That point is not pointy enough. C I'm going to get rid of, because again, this is a curved edge. I am looking for curves, but I want it to point off something like this as well. So these aren't points, I'm going to get rid of C. And now D and E look very, very, very similar. So when we get to this point, like we've been talking about in this question type, we have to think, okay, look, what's different between these two options? And hopefully you can see that D and E are both pointy, there's both two, they both look good, but the difference is this small side on each triangle and this one here as well. And now the difference is D is a straight line and E is slightly curved. Do we want a straight edge or slightly curved? Well, let's go back to our original shape and look, if I were to get rid of my thick blue lines again, because obviously you'd be using a pencil that's a bit thinner, easier to see, 
we can see this is a curve. So we want a curve for it to work nicely. Therefore, D does not work. E has the curve and E is the answer. So for these question types, we've got our technique, draw it in, do the cuts yourself or fill in the gaps, whatever you need to do. But then when you've narrowed it down and you have to be really precise, think about length, think about type of shape, type of line, think about angles, everything comes into it and we have to pick the exact right shape. So that leaves me with one thing to do, is to leave you with a question to answer in the comment section down below. Please like this video, subscribe for more, there's loads more coming, and most importantly, share it with someone who you think might find it useful. And as I said earlier, the link's down in the description below. Get your child to try out our resources or our tutoring for absolutely free. Why not give it a go? Guys, I'll see you next time.